Australian food. What is it? It's probably just like our food, but slightly different. The Try Guys are in Australia, and it's a beautiful day for a food adventure. Today, we're gonna visit three different places that are known for their Australian cuisine. One, a seafood restaurant. Two, meat pies. And three, a steakhouse. Time to go on a food tour. We're in Melbourne, Australia, which is a melting pot of cultures. People eat kangaroo here because there are kangaroo here. But no Australian food adventure is complete without Vegemite. We're gonna do it correctly, which is, I believe, a thin layer of Vegemite and lots of butter. Oh, fuck. It's so crazy. Now it looks like Nutella. I've been told it does not taste like Nutella. You're supposed to have it with butter, but I can't do that. What would I rather do? Wreck my palate or wreck my insides? Yeah, let's put some butter on this. Cheers to the Australian food tour. Oh, that's great. Oh my God, that is healthy. Oh! Oh God, it just hit the back side of my tongue. There's a little moment in there where I was like, actually, maybe it's kind of good. <laughs> then it went, nope, I'm just kidding. Well, it looks like today we Vegemite have a good time. <coughs> I need more coffee. My name's Leanne Oldman. I'm the beverage director for all of Andrew McConnell's restaurants. My name's Colin Means. I'm the head chef here at Colour & Cool. How long has this restaurant been around? We just had our 10th birthday. Okay. Happy, oh, birthday. happy birthday! Thank you! It was very exciting. So in front of us today, we've got a variety of some uh, seafood from Australia. We've got a selection of oysters here. Some are native to Australia, which is called an Agassi oyster. This comes from Tasmania. I'm gonna Agassi all over this oyster. Oh boy. <laughs> Then this oyster here, my particular favorite, is a Pacific oyster. Finally, the third type of oyster is a Sydney rock oyster. They're a little bit more fruity in flavor. We are fresh to the Australian food scene, but it appears that there's a lot of great seafood here. I think seafood in Australia, there's a huge amount of variety. A number of states in Australia that have different types of climate. Some cold water in Victoria and Tasmania, some warmer water in Western Australia and in Northern Queensland. That means there's a fantastic variety of different types of shellfish, to large migrating fish up the coastline. This is an oyster shucker. Mm. So I'm gonna go give it a little wiggle. I know you're gonna have the other Try Guys help prepare those with you today. We are. And I'm gonna twist it. Nice, oh, okay. Uh, and we're just gonna brush away any of the grit. Have you ever shucked an oyster before? Uh, we've shucked oysters. I've never shucked an oyster. Oh, you haven't shucked an oyster? It's gonna no. be interesting. Okay, I'm in the booty hole. You're in there? No, just a little bit further. Push the tip in a little harder than this. Yep. Kind oh, of geez. prize it open. Oh, I got it. Nice, I got it. Ned. Way to go, yeah. Ned. I think mine looks perfect. Is it moving? Yeah. Is this You've, alive too? Yes, they're alive. You don't Wait, want to really? eat a dead oyster. <laughs> are, are all oysters alive when I eat them? Yes. Uh, have I been always eating live oysters? If you have been to a restaurant that has them already like this and shucked, then I would say they're not alive. But going to a restaurant that shucks the oysters from live, you know they're gonna be super fresh. Cheers. Mm. Oh, clean, oh, yeah. mm. fresh. Very fresh. fresh. On our doorstep with local farmers and producers. We have things from parts of Asia, the States, Europe, all the different states having such different climates. We can get things all year round and it creates for a really, really interesting style of cooking. Okay, so this here is from Queensland and it's called a spanner crab. Oh, it's still alive. It's still alive. You can guess why it's called a spanner crab from its claws that kind of resemble a spanner. Sure. What's a spanner? <laughs> Is that not an American thing? So I, uh, you mean like a wrench? A wrench? A wrench? A wrench? A wrench? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh man, this guy was threatening me in a dark alley with a giant spanner. Um, I don't think that happens in Melbourne. <laughs> well, <laughs> happens in America. <laughs> Why do you keep the, them alive on ice? When we receive it, we want to keep it as fresh as possible. Then before we cook it, we'll put it onto ice and then plunge it into some actual ice water to put it to sleep. That way, when we do cook it, it's a little bit more humane. So it's sleep. Yes. Wow, it's just like a nice nap. And it's like a very cold nap. Well, this one is a Western Australian marin. They have a little bit of a blue belly on them. Oh my it god. It looks like Ooh. a lobster. Can I rub his belly? Yeah, I go. 
Hi, baby. Am I oh! oh. <laughs> so this this is the live crab here, and we've cooked one. So Ooh. this one's been steamed. Okay. Uh, you see the color comes out a little bit when you do that. Mm -hmm. Pull the hands off. So right. pull the claws and all the legs off. Ready? Ready. One, two, three. Oh, oh yeah. All right, well, let's, we're gonna have to see what's in the engine. Let's pop that hood off. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Oh. oh my God, Ned, you're so strong. Oh, wow. I find the best way to extract the meat from this, I kind of give it a little squash. Oh, you, you like use, smash you it? Does anyone ever do a... You could, you could give it a little whack. Yeah, let's give it a little whack. A little you want to give it a little whack? A little whack. One, two, three. All right, two hands now. One, two, three. Oh boy, that might have been too much. Oh. Oh no. Did I just That's okay. ruin the presentation? Whack. Just a little whack. So then we have the meat inside. Wow. Oh. So that's Whoa. Hey, he's on the ground. We got a, we got a Marin down. We got a jumper. <laughs> we got a jumper. We got a, we got a jumper. Oh, oh no. Oh, we got God. two. I'm You're so doing sorry. great, Jack. Okay. Look at this. Don't. Can you stop it? I'm trying to <laughs> stop it. Some people use UV lights. So the shell shows up on the UV light. Yeah. Just like blood. And scene. Don't. <laughs> no, we, no. Guys, this was awesome. Thank you for showing us the way. But I think from here on out, we're going to let you do the cooking and we'll do the tasting. Can't wait. This is everything that we consider to be the best seafood in Australia right now. So starting at the top, we have two different varieties of oyster. We have a Sydney rock oyster and a Pacific oyster. On the Sydney rock is a scampi roll from Western Australia. We have mussels with preserved lemon from St. Helens in Tasmania. The sea urchin also from Tasmania. Honey bugs from Northern Australia. They're like a small uh, crayfish. Aww. Aww. On the bottom, we have scallops from Rottnest Island. Our spanner crabs. Some abalone, again, from Tasmania. A scarlet prawn from Deepwater WA. And Ned and I prepared the spanner crabs for you this evening. Yes. Um, yeah, how much of this did Zach and I work on? Okay, maybe you okay. half opened this one. Half opened it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can tell because some of the shell is broken off. <laughs> wow, with all this food, I, I feel like I'm going to get so parched. Do we have anything to drink? I can absolutely organize something for you to drink. In Australia, we have a relatively old wine culture. We have a couple of really unique Australian styles, and one of which you'll try today, which is Hunter Valley Semillon. Nowhere else in the world treats Semillon on the way that we make it in that region. And I'm also giving you a, a fortified wine from Rutherglen in northeast Victoria that produces wines in a truly unique style. We're starting with two drinks. So this is the wine that I've told you a little about from a region called Rutherglen, which is in the northeast of Victoria. This is 2016 Deviation Road Loftier. It's Look at the bubbles on that! <laughs> oh my God! It's one of the most exciting sparkling wine producers in Australia. I would taste the sparkling wine first. It's a little fresher, lighter, a little bit more yeasty. And then the second has lots of quite distinctive almond salty notes. All right, cheers. I'm, I'm so hungry. Cheers to Australia. To, to Australia. Australia. And to all these beautiful creatures that mm. we're about to eat. Mm. Look at all these funny silverwares. What the hell is this? Start with this then, yeah? Muscle. Mmm. Mmm. fabric -y texture almost. Mm. It has like a feltness to it, but yeah. really pleasant and wonderful. Mm. Oysters yeah, can... with the little oh. Oh. Row. Whoa, look at the color on that. Mmm. Salty. Brining the oysters perfect. That tastes like just licking the oceans. Yeah. I was gonna say well, something dirty. Yeah. Licking the ocean's face. Mmm. Mm. It's little blue balls. Mm -hmm. Don't have blue balls after that. Mm -hmm. No, I sure don't. Because that was an explosion of flavor. Mm. Why don't we just try the, the straight up fresh oyster? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my mm. god, that was good. I don't always love oysters. That is my top three oysters I've ever had. More like an oh boyster. <laughs> with the stronger seafood dishes, you know, the richer oysters, I would have the fortified wine. Whoa, the fortified wine is, is wild, wild. Holy Whoa. guacamole. So this is the one that has a little bit of uh, liquor in it, right? It smells like it has a little mm. bit of liquor. It kind of smells like That a makes sense. It's like I'm tasting uh, gin wine. I think I just got drunk sniffing it. But with the more delicate things, the honey bugs especially, try the sparkling wine, emphasizes the sweetness of the meat. Oh my God, that's incredible. It's like sashimi grade. Wow. Ooh. This is what you've always wished shrimp were. Oh it's like my goodness. The this Swedish is, shrimp. It has such an unappealing name. Honey bug. Yeah, someone got it and thought, is this a shrimp? And then they tasted it and said, no, honey. 
Don't bug me with that shrimp. No, honey bug. <laughs> honey bug. Honey That's bug. it. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Carl. Uh, let's move on to the uh... urchin. Urchin. Mm. Wow. Oh. Fantastic. Wow. Mm. Wow. That, that is, is wow. That feels like a forbidden flavor. Like I just ate something that I wasn't allowed to know about. Do you think it tastes like God's cum? <laughs> what did you just say about cum? I, just, I asked him if he thought it tasted like God's cum. God's cum? Shh, keep your voice down. What are you <laughs> saying? Shh, we're in a nice restaurant. Don't say it out loud. Think about, but like, think about going down on God, do you think? <laughs> I don't like this conversation, but that was really good. We did good. have body, blood, but there was one thing missing. <laughs> All right, all right, let's move on. Let's, let's move, move on. on, let's, let's move, move on. Move on. Uh, let's try these guys. Ooh, abalone. Okay. Abalone. Mm. Chewy. It's kind of like the texture of an art eraser. This, this tastes like ham. Like pork, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like pork. yeah. Scallops were one of my top favorite foods in the world. Oh, that's amazing. Crabs. Crabs. Mmm. The claw. Mmm. It's just so fresh. You can tell the freshness right on the first bite. I wish my body were this delicious, you know? Me too. All right, and finally, this big old shrimp. Oh wow! Do I eat oh it like, my god, it's so big. Do you eat it like corn on the cob? Oh no, it's so beautiful. Oh, his head just comes right off. Look at just the color quality. Yeah, it's wow. so red. Whoa! Wow! Whoa. Are you sucking the brains out? Yeah, I started. I started with the brains. Are you kidding me? Are, Are you kidding me? Look at this! Wow! Look at this! Stick it in wow. your mouth. It's giant. The tenderest lobster. That is so good. It's like tangy. Oh my God, what? It's like the filet mignon of lobster. It really is. Mm. All right, honey bugs. <laughs> you ready for the next dish? Yeah. Let's continue. This is the abalone tonkatsu. Wow. We cleaned the abalone, steamed it, crumbed it, and then fried it, just like fried chicken. We serve it in white bread with shaved cabbage and a sauce called bulldog. Abalone had an almost meat-like flavor. It's really meaty. The yeah. texture as well would be almost like a chicken thigh. This is from one of my favorite brewers. So they're, they're a couple of hours drive from here in Gippsland. So this is a sour beer. It brings some of the freshness that you might experience with wine because this is fried and, you know, sweet. And they've fermented the beer with uh, sake leaves. So what's left at the bottom of the tank of sake after the sake has been taken away and some fresh persimmon. Mm, wow. So Asian. Wow. So <laughs> Just Asian. the most Asian. Mm. Just like Ned and Keith. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, fuck. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Wow. Tastes yes. like fried chicken. Yes. Yes. It has yes. the consistency of a uh, chicken thigh, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit thicker and tougher than chicken, but really a great chew, a great crunch to it. Very fried chicken-y. It's the such a great flavor. White. This is dope. And just ingenious using mm -hmm. the, the texture of the abalone, which mm -hmm. most people don't eat abalone. It's, it's like, really smart. It's not delicate. Oh. It's like coarse. It's commonplace. It goes right with the sour beer. It's a fancy experience. But it feels really down to earth. And this light sour beer really brightens your palate right back up. It's mm. really great. It's sour and like slightly sweet, but it's just light enough to counteract the fried food. Uh, oh stop. God. Everybody stop. Everybody stop the joke. Stop the joke. This is a really good example of seafood sort of being presented in a totally alternative way. Mm. I mean, you got mm. the fried chicken god saying yes, to an abalone katsu sandwich. It yeah. really yeah. tastes like a great fried chicken katsu. It's, it's yeah. And this idea. bread, it passes the Ned bread test. Hell yeah. Guys, don't fill up too much on bread. We have four Shut your mouth. courses. Mm -hmm. Let's get the next course. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Third up, Spanish mackerel. We took it off the bone earlier. We've kept it raw and we serve it as a crudo with red Whitlaw and a dashi seasoned with orange juice, some smoked soy sauce, and a little bit of roasted chili. I don't know if fish is like actually an aphrodisiac, but he gets more handsome with everything he feeds me. I think so. Yeah. I was about to ask him if he was married or dating or what. I, like, like he was handsome in the beginning, but now I'm like, someone's gotta lock that down. I know, right? I was like, yeah. what's going on? And then we're having a roussan from the Rhone Valley in France. Zazu Blanc, really textural, but has wonderful freshness and floral fragrance to accompany the delicacy of the raw fish. We've had a lot of wine. <laughs> yeah, and I'm feeling An like unexpected that. element to this video. Is Dad Ned becoming no. daddy? Oh, well, your words, <laughs> not mine. Mmm, mm. sweet, orangey, 
the tiniest bit bitter, almost like a little bit of bitters in a cocktail. There's a little bit of savoriness to it. The oh, about to say. thing is very mm. earthy, right? I get a lot of savory. We're just saying words. <laughs> <laughs> Cabbage that's on top really gives it some crunch. Yeah. But the rest of it's very, very, very soft. Like, mm. just, it almost melts as soon as it gets in your mouth. Mmm. Juice. Mmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Just refreshing. It has a nice body to it. But like, smooth. It's such a beautiful body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How beautiful is that body? It's so beautiful. I do feel like we're at a, a brunch for four independent young women in the city. Yeah. Oh, I'm such a Samantha. You are not a Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Whoa. Okay, dish number four and dish number five to share. So the fourth one, the marin. We've blanched them in some boiling salted water that mimics seawater and then finished them over the grill. And then on the side, grilled cos lettuce with a mayonnaise that has sauerkraut and dried herbs. The fifth dish, this is our French toast with spanner crab, sea urchin, and a sauce of brown butter and smoked soy sauce. What is going on in that beautiful Australian brain of yours? <laughs> How did you come up with this? Hey, Scott. Uh, what's going on in that beautiful Scottish brain of yours? <laughs> so I mentioned earlier that these are two very iconic producers, Brokenwood Semillon and Bindi Chardonnay. This comes from a single vineyard called Oaky Creek. You know, between the wines and the koalas, I'm learning that two is better than one here. Mm. Mm-hmm. Two digs. Kind of. Let's try the Marin. WTF. Let's just go for it. Mmm. Mm. Incredible. We said the other thing was like the best lobster you've ever had. This fucks that to death. Mm -hmm. Like the, the smoky savoriness from the grill. I'm getting a little bit of the sauerkraut. It's really a delicate lobster flavor. You do pick up the grill and then it goes really well with this little sauerkraut. I like this mixing wine philosophy they have. I'm just gonna double fist my two wines. Yeah, I want all wines to be served twice. Mmm. That one tastes like wine. <laughs> Mmm. This tastes like wine. It smells kind of like spaghetti. <laughs> I just... You can't, you can't, you can't. Yes, he can. Wow. Um, Aussie. Wine. Let's try the Let's fifth try the dish. dish. <laughs> la, 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 la. La, la, la. So sweet. Oh, wow. Mmm, oh, my God. Goodness gracious. That's delicious. I have chills and they are multiplying. Mm. I used to work at Joe's Crab Shack and this is better than that. <laughs> the French toast is crunchy, but it's not too sweet. It's just not it's the kind sweet of like, it adds. It's a savory French toast. It's a savory It's French an Aussie toast. toast. It's so small and I was wondering why it was so small, but it's because it's crazy rich. It's so fluffy and flaky. And then there's also crab. Yeah. And if that wasn't enough, you got that sea urchin on top, mm. baby. Maybe I should like, Start fishing. Oh, damn. Oh, oh, yeah. Now that's a fish. This is the final one. This is the King George Whiting. So if we're gonna talk local fish, this is right down the street. This fish is from Port Phillip Bay. We serve it with a dill cream, some pickled cucumbers, and some uh, wild fennel. This plating looks like just a little like underwater party. I have tears in my eyes. I know, he's so cool. <laughs> And then this is Sinapius Clem, so from the very north of Tasmania. <laughs> it's just fun saying Can you say Clem. It again? <laughs> Can you say the whole name again? It sounds like a Harry Potter villain. We're a little high Clem. on seafood and wine. And wine, that's yeah. a good thing. Is it called Sinapius Clem? <laughs> Sinapius Clem. <laughs> You'll never be at this school again, Harry Potter, for I am Sinapius Clem. Mm, fish seafood. <laughs> It's a blend of Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Grunewald Wiener, Riesling, and Gewürztraminer. Gentlemen, it has been a wonderful day filled with beautiful flavors and fantastic mouthfeel. We're here at the end, and there's no one else I'd rather eat seafood with. Cheers. Enjoy your club. <laughs> <laughs> That green sauce is so bright and acidic. Good. Oh, there's an excellent oh, white fish. The deal is oh, an excellent white fish. Unbelievable. Oh. It's the fish next door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Each pairing really like balanced whatever we were eating. If it was really heavy on the food, then it was like light in the wine. My favorite single bite was that little honey bug. It was just the most perfect 
delicate little morsel of food. It was so incredible, and it was just unlike any crustacean I've ever had. I gotta give it up to that crab French toast. It, it sent me somewhere, and I'm gonna be searching to get back there for the rest of my goddamn life. My favorite bite was the mackerel with the little bitter lettuce and the sauce. It felt like it had every single flavor. I was really impressed by that abalone katsu sandwich. Oh yeah, man. Really creative way of, of recontextualizing seafood as something else. Kudos to the chef because it's all fantastic ingredients. I think this video has proved that Australia has access to wonderful seafood, but the chef here has made some really excellent choices with creative dishes. What drew me to Australia as a young chef was that multicultural style, having everything on your doorstep. Love working here at Cutwood & Co. I have such a profound respect for Australian cuisine, which makes me wonder, what the fuck are they doing with Vegemite? What you the guys didn't like Vegemite? No! Wait, you guys don't like it? Are you out of your no. mind? I no. like it. It's are you out of your, you're lying. I it like it. tastes pretty good. Tenacious Clam! <laughs> <laughs> are you team Lunacy or are you team Zach and Keith on the Vegemite? Leave your response down, down under. Under. Next time on the Try Guys Go Down Under. Down Under. We tried the reef and now it's time for the beef. Like, I get that people are more hardcore in Australia. Like, I get it. But you don't have to prove it with your breakfast.